Hi there, friends. This is Eden, and I help aspiring beautypreneurs create their first product line for skin or hair um, and sell it profitably. They can either create it themselves or go to manufacturing, but whatever it is you're trying to do to get your first line up and running, I'm here to help. So today in this question of the day, I would love to answer a question that I get almost definitely weekly and sometimes almost daily in my DMs or in emails. And this is something that a lot of people struggle with who are trying to do things themselves, which is how do I do percentages? Or I have a hard time uh, working out the percentages in formulas. How do I create my own formulas? Or I feel intimidated by the math and the, basically the percentage math feels scary to them when they're looking at free formulas or when they're trying to create their own. And I wanna share with you a couple of easy hacks that I have for someone who's just starting out that would have helped me when I was just starting out, okay? But, um, you know, I didn't have those until, you know, much later. So let's take a look. I'm gonna share my screen here in a minute so that you can see more easily. So the easiest way to do percentages for formulas. The first thing you want to do is go over to makingcosmetics.com. So let's shoot over to makingcosmetics.com. And when you're there, you will see this little button here that says resources. If you're looking in a smaller screen, it might actually be here in the swirling cream GIF or whatever they have here, which makes it hard to see, okay? So just be aware of that if you're looking on a smaller screen. Today I'm using a slightly larger device, so, you know, all the tabs fit across the whole screen. So I go over to resources and I click on that. And then when I click on that, there will be a whole bunch of stuff that comes up that is um, very interesting for you to read wherever you may be in the world. And it's all free. Most of it is relevant to US people, but a lot of it translates to wherever you may be in the world, especially the formulating bit. So let's go over to the formulating. And what I want to click on next is this tab here that says, what do I need to make? All right. So when I click on that, right, I'm going to see a whole bunch of uh, formulation types or product types. Okay. So let me just scroll down quickly to explain what I mean. Bath oil, right? So it gives you a whole template for how to make bath oils and the percentages and so forth. Face cream. Um, hair shampoo, conditioner, shaving cream, etc. sun protection cream, okay? All of the things. So let's go back to my presentation here for a minute. I'm going to have to find a way to move this along. We, okay. So we'll go back to my presentation. I'm wondering how I can move this. Okay, there we go. All right, so we went to the how do I make making cosmetics, resources, formulating, what do I need to make, right? So we did that. And then I would then choose a template of some sort. So the first template we saw when we went to that site was the bath oil template. So I, that's the template I would choose. And then after I've chosen that template, it um, allocates um, ingredients in each category, right? So I'd look at each category and I would choose ingredients, you know, either that I've researched myself or that they suggest in their template. And I would just pick an ingredient from each category that they suggest. You know, they'll suggest, you know, essential oils or fragrance or emulsifiers or whatever, what have you. The next thing you'll want to do is make your formula. If you're in the United States, you're probably working in ounces. Uh, you could also work in grams, but you know, if ounces are feel more like home to you, then by all means do ounces. I would suggest do batches of 10 ounce. I hate to see people make huge experiments of something they don't even know is gonna work yet, right? So only do your experiments in 10 ounce batches or 100 grams batches, or you can do it in increments of that. So, you know, you can do 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. 
or you can do 100 or 200. Now, 10 ounces is a good size sample for anything to use, um, especially like if it's hair conditioner or, you know, something that requires a lot of product in order for you to experiment with. Uh, 200 grams would be closer to 10 ounces. So 200 grams would probably be a little under eight ounces, right? If you're in the UK, really if you're anywhere outside of the United States. Um, and the reason why I choose these increments is that it's close to 100%, right? So 100 grams, 100% um, of 100 grams is 100 grams. 100% uh, of 10 ounces is 10 ounces, right? 10% of 10 ounces is one ounce. 10% of 100 grams is 10 grams. So you can see that when you're working in grams, it becomes easier because it's a one-to-one -one configuration, right? So for anything less than 10%, when you're dealing with the 10 ounce formula, that would be 0 0.x percent. I mean, 0 0.x ounces. For example, 5% would then be 0 0.5 ounces. Anything less than 1% dealing with the 10 ounce formula. Sorry, I left the S off the less in that sentence. So anything less than 1% when you're dealing with the 10 ounce formula would then be 0.0x. Okay, so that means 0.5% um, would then be 0.05 ounces. Okay, so for anything less than 10, when you're dealing with ounces, you put a point before the number. For anything less than one, you put a point zero before the number. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So using the example of the bath oil um, template that we saw before, um, you would say, for example, it's asking you for um, a percentage of each of these categories, carrier oil, emollient, antioxidant, emulsifiers, essential oils, and preservatives. And it gives you a range within each category that you can use. So I think for carrier oil, um, without going back to the, you know, template, because it'll just make the video take longer, but for the carrier oil, it's suggested, I don't know, say maybe 65 to 80%, you know? Um, and so I chose 80% because I figure if it's a bath oil, it might as well be mostly oil. Uh, for the emollient, I chose triglyceride at 10%. For the antioxidant, I chose a mixture of vitamin E and rosemary oleo raisin. Um, for the emulsifiers, I chose polyglycerol oleate, right? That was one of the options they gave. Um, and I've seen similar um, emulsifiers in other bath oils. And if you're wondering why would you need an emulsifier for a bath oil, it's because if you don't use an emulsifier, you could just do an oil blend and call it a bath oil that someone could put a, a, a tablespoon of or whatever in their bath. However, it is not. It's just going to sit on top of the bath water, kind of like a, an oil slick. It's not really going to blend into the water. And that's fine. I mean, you can still take your bath and you'll just have extra moisture and oil and stuff on you. But if you want the, the oil to fully blend with all of the bath water without leaving that film of oil on top, you will need a, an oil in water emulsifier. Okay, so that means that the bulk of your percentage will be water and a little bit will be oil. And so it's almost kind of like that or a solubilizer, like a, a, a polysorbate or something like that, just so that your, your, your oil actually blends into the water. Okay, so essential oils and preservative. And your preservative does not need to be a strong preservative for this. And it can also be an oil-based preservative. Um, they used in their template something like tea tree oil. And I'm just like, tea tree oil is not a preservative. It may extend sh shelf life a little bit, but the reason why they could even call that a preservative in that instance is because this is pretty much an oil blend. It's not really a full on emulsion. It becomes an emulsion once you add it to the bath water, hence the emulsifiers in the solution. But most emulsifiers are kind of 
oil-based or they can be dissolved in oil. So that's the 10 ounce of bath oil. So if you were doing it in the grams version, you would do a 100 gram formula and then you'd do your calculations the same way. So 80% of, you know, 100 grams would be 80 grams, 10% of, you know, 100 grams would be 10 grams. So really, as you can see, it's a one for one equivalent, which then makes making your formula really, really easy and a lot less intimidating. Okay. And then you just want to make sure that everything adds up to uh, 100 grams or to 10 ounces. Okay. And that's it. So that is that. Um, let me stop sharing here so you can see my little face. So if you liked that video, please give the, the video a thumbs up. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you feel a little bit less intimidated by percentages. And um, if you like this kind of information or need this kind of information, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. Um, and right next to the subscribe button is that little notification bell. If you hit that, you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. If you want a free library of things that you can refer to, to DIY, if you want to be informed of any paid courses I have, I have a lot of low cost options available for people, or if you want a consultation with me, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter or to um, email me in the information that's provided in the description box below. Other than that, I thank you for watching and um, I look forward to hearing about what you create. Take care. Bye-bye.